can actually buy two of these for $50. They're wireless, uh, very easy to fly, very cool, you know, just mechanically and electronically. They're amazing little uh, devices. Uh, and just the dollars, two of these are actually cheaper than the Lurie Bird was uh, back in 1971. And one of these little guys has more computer processing power than the uh, Lunar Lander did. You know, and so this is a good example of how toys are now kind of climbing onto Moore's Law. You know, the advancement in technology, computing power, etc., is really going to impact you know everything. Uh, the toy industry, probably you know more than most. Um, one of my first kind of introductions to computers and programming was this toy, the Big Track, from 1979. And uh, you know, so the toys were really reflecting you know the shape of technology to come, even back then. So, in some sense, I've always felt like the toys were kind of controlling me. That they were, more than anything else in my life, kind of impacting who I was becoming as an adult. Uh, and I always wondered, you know, I've always been interested in the dynamics of why we play, why we enjoy this stuff, uh, what do we get out of it. Um, you know, inherently, I have a very strong kind of evolutionist uh, view of the world, in that almost all of our behaviors are explained kind of in evolutionary terms. And there's a reason for all this. You know, and it's not just happenstance, it's not disposable, it's not frivolous, the way our culture seems to kind of treat it. Uh, there was an interesting theory I read recently. The origin of humor has always been kind of a big mystery. You know, why we, you know, what benefit is humor evolutionarily? And they were studying prairie dogs, and they noticed, you know, prairie dogs do this one thing. Whenever there's danger, one prairie dog will, at risk to itself, jump up and do this barking sound. You know, basically saying, danger, danger. And all the other prairie dogs go hiding, you know, in the burrows. Um, occasionally, though, it's a false alarm. It turns out it wasn't danger at all. In which case, the, uh, the sentry does this particular behavior that spreads through the whole colony. This video is put in place. They do this funny little chirping sound um, to indicate that it was a false alarm. And they basically spread this. You know, one of them will start doing this little chirping, and the others will start chirping. And uh, the theory is that this is really like showing the evolution of humor. You know, in some sense, this is the prairie dog version of a nacho. You know, so one goes up, danger, 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 and then not, and then they all oh. laugh. And really, the idea is that there's this social bonding that occurs afterwards, this release of adrenaline and energy. And it also becomes a social bonding so that they don't want really to blame the sentry for doing the false alarm. They still listen to him next time. So, um, the idea that all these things that, uh, you know, we find enjoyable, you know, really have a very strong basis in our survival, uh, is kind of intriguing to me. 